Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The First Hunters A recent discovery in the jungle of Sri Lanka may just be the very first known instance of anyone hunting using a bow and arrow outside of Africa. Archaeologists were digging inside of a deep rainforest cave in Sri Lanka when they came across arrowheads carved from animal bones 48,000 years old. That's incredibly ancient and over 10,000 years older than the next earliest evidence of bow hunting in Asia. The only older example came from a discovery in South Africa of bow and arrow technology 64,000 years old. The rainforest cave is called Fa Hien Lina, where archaeologists discovered a total of 130 arrow tips made from bone, along with 29 bone tools. The tools were probably being used for processing animal skins and plant fibers. This is even more fascinating because the tools suggest that whoever lived in the cave and hunted with the arrows was also fashioning their own clothing. Wearing clothing may seem pretty normal to us, but just imagine being the first humans who figured out they could wear animal skin. As for what bones the arrows were made from, most were monkey bones. We know they are arrowheads because according to Michelle Langley from Griffith University in Australia, they are too small and light to be spearheads and too heavy to be blow darts. The only thing that makes sense is arrows. Arrows that were almost definitely used to hunt primates. Number 9. The Maya Power Broker Information has been revealed about a long since dead Maya power broker who left this world in obscurity. Ancient hieroglyphics discovered in a stairway near his burial tells the story of his life in great detail. He was a member of the elite Maya but had great misfortune 1,300 years ago. The hieroglyphics found in the jungle say that this man's name was Ashpach Wal and that he helped to facilitate an alliance between two of the biggest dynasties in Maya history. He was the broker of peace between the Maya king of Copan, which is today located in Honduras, and the Maya king of Calakmul in southern Mexico. Everything was going just swell, up until shortly after the alliance fell apart, and then his fortune suddenly plummeted. The hieroglyphics explaining the story of Ashpach Wall were discovered while excavating an old Maya plaza in El Palmar, Mexico. This is pretty close to the borders of both Belize and Guatemala. Upon translating the hieroglyphics, the researchers learned that the man buried nearby had traveled 350 miles to meet the king of Copan so that he could satisfy the king of Calakmul. 350 miles was an enormous distance to cover in the year 726, making him a pretty big deal. The piece was so important that Ajpach Wall was immediately elevated to the status of elite. However, researchers were confused when they found the burial because there were no goods inside except a pair of clay pots. Plus, his skeletal remains showed that he had been malnourished, sick, and suffered from arthritis. Plus, his teeth had been falling out. It seems even though he was elevated to a higher level of society, once the alliance fell apart, he was shamed and then buried alone soon after. He wasn't the only one who lost his life pretty miserably in those days. Just 10 years after the alliance, the king of Copan was decapitated. The city fell into turmoil and was quickly abandoned and reclaimed by the jungle. Number 8. Too Many Frogs Suriname is sandwiched between Guiana and French Guiana, and it holds one of the last pristine tropical forests anywhere on Earth. It should come as no surprise, then, that a team of researchers recently discovered 46 new species in this remote biosphere, including some weird frogs and a catfish with spiny armor. Scientist Trond Larsen called the jungle here one of the last unexplored wildernesses in the world and said it was a thrilling experience just to journey through such a wild and biodiverse place. The survey went on for three weeks and included 53 scientists working with local indigenous people and students to catalog life forms. They found some familiar critters like electric eels, stingrays, bullet ants, and they documented a total of 1,300 species. Many of these were new species, including the armored catfish, which has sharp spines to protect it from the giant piranhas that live here. And then there are all the frogs, like the cowboy frog, which has white fringes on its legs that kind of look like cowboy spurs. They also found what they are calling the Crayola katydid, 
a type of giant horned grasshopper. And of course, there were lots of familiar frogs, like the Pac-Man frog, a fat predator that sits with its mouth open and basically waits for birds or other frogs to get too close. Number 7. The Coastal Maya The coast of Quintana Roo in Mexico is covered by a wet and crushingly hot jungle. It's technically a mangrove forest, which is really an extra wet jungle on the coast. In any case, the Maya civilization lived in this region for 3,000 years, starting around the year 800 BC. Ecologist and professor of anthropology Dr. Jeffrey Glover is currently on a mission to better understand how the coastal Maya lived in the mangroves and what differentiated them from the other Maya. These days, the coast of Quintana Roo is one of the least developed coastlines in the entire world. It lacks resorts, golf courses, and theme parks like you can find in the Riviera Maya. And for this reason, you can still find a lot of ancient evidence of the Maya hidden in the forest. For example, the site of Vista Alegre goes back centuries, once a small port town with a huge pyramid in the center that stood over 43 feet tall. Dr. Glover says the pyramid was probably used as a lookout tower so that the Maya could see anyone approaching by the ocean. It's still not clear exactly how different the coastal Maya groups were, other than that they focused more heavily on fishing and trade. There seemed to be a much healthier trading network with the Maya who lived on the coast since they could easily move from one city or outpost to the next with boats, rather than marching through the dangerous jungles of the interior to trade with their neighbors. And now for number six, but first it's shout out time! I wanted to say a big thank you to Eric P and Rich Raz for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. Number six, Amazonian Stonehenge. Hundreds of extremely strange earthworks have been identified in the Amazon. They have been described as Stonehenge-like earthworks because of their similarity to the monument in England. These strange earthworks were discovered in northwestern Brazil, deep in the Amazon. Each structure is a geometric enclosure hidden underneath the trees, revealed now only because of new satellite mapping technology. The truth is that all physical traces of the earthworks are gone, with only the scars they left on the earth still visible. Nonetheless, researchers can reconstruct exactly what was happening here even without physical ruins. We know each earthwork measures about 36 feet wide, about 1,000 feet in diameter. The structures also had an outer ditch and an inner wall, the exact same as Stonehenge did 5,000 years ago. The only real difference is that Stonehenge is 2,500 years older than whatever was built here in the jungle. We don't even know what these monuments looked like, if the enclosures were ringed by huge blocks of stone or not. We only know that there was something impressive here, a huge ritual landscape of ceremonial monuments, and they were built by an Amazonian people who are now long gone and whose history has been forgotten. Number 5. The New Titi Monkey Scientists have discovered a totally new species of monkey in Peru, and as weird as it may sound, the discovery came thanks to a mysterious monkey corpse that had been sitting in a drawer in a dusty back room at the American Natural History Museum in New York City. This monkey had the wrong toe tag on it, and for almost 100 years, nobody realized it was a rare specimen from the forests of a faraway land. The monkey was rediscovered by researchers out in the field in 2013. A Dutch primatologist went on a mission through central Peru and officially found the monkey, and then came the rediscovery of the monkey in the drawer. Finally, the Calicebus urubambensis officially exists. It's a pretty big deal to find a new primate, especially this late in the game. Only 21 new species have been identified since the year 2000, according to the IUCN. Several of these new species are called titi monkeys, like the newly discovered one in the Peruvian forest. There are about 30 monkeys that fall under this genus, and they all live in the jungles of South America. These monkeys are smaller than domestic cats, eat fruit, take one mate for life, and even adopt the infants of other monkeys if those monkeys can no longer care for their own children. Number 4. The Treasure of Lima By the time the 16th century rolled around, Spain was in total control of Lima, what today is the capital of Peru. They had defeated the Inca and had spread out through the whole continent, 
and they were busy rounding up every last scrap of gold they could get their hands on. With help from the Roman Catholic Church, the Spanish gathered a treasure unlike any other treasure on the planet, a massive stockpile of precious jewels. In the early 19th century, when the Wars of Independence started to break out in South America, the Spanish had no choice but to send their stockpile of treasure back to the motherland. In 1820, when Lima was under immense pressure and the Peruvian War of Independence was already underway, Spain transported the massive wealth of the country to Mexico to be kept safe. The treasure was put onto the ship the Mary Deer, captained by William Thompson. He and his crew were charged with $60 million worth of cargo, which would be billions in today's currency. As you can imagine, the captain and the crew were too tempted not to try and steal the treasure. They killed the priests and the guards that had been sent with them as escort, made for Cocos Island in Costa Rica, and buried the treasure deep in the jungle. Unfortunately for them, the ship was captured, and every last man was hanged except for the captain and his first mate. They promised to lead the Spanish to the treasure, but escaped into the jungle and were never seen again. And neither was the treasure, which is said to still be out there somewhere. Number 3. The Lost City of the Monkey God The jungle of Mosquitia covers about 20,000 square miles of nearly impenetrable terrain in Honduras and Nicaragua. Legend has it that somewhere deep in this jungle is the city of the Monkey God. The legend says the city was struck by a bunch of different catastrophes, things like floods and earthquakes and disease, and the locals believed their monkey god was angry with them. And so, they simply walked out of the city one day and left all their treasures and belongings behind. The story of the city has been captivating adventurers since the 1500s. Steve Elkins was obsessed with finding the city in the 1990s and went on a crazy expedition in 2012. And he actually found the city! It was only thanks to the newly invented LiDAR system which allowed Elkins to see the terrain underneath the jungle and pick up any remnants of lost cities. With this technology, he identified a massive city in the jungle, but it would take another three years before he could get a team there on foot. And when they finally reached the city, it was so swallowed by the jungle that even when they stood in front of the remains of a pyramid, they couldn't actually see it because the whole thing was covered in dirt and leaves. In the end, they did find the foundation stones of buildings, carvings of jaguars from hundreds of years ago, and everything to suggest this really was the city of the monkey god. It's since been labeled a sacred place and is still completely buried by the jungle. Number 2. The Great Thai Tiger Just recently, conservationists in Thailand discovered something they've called a miracle and a huge victory for a certain species of animal which was almost completely wiped out by illegal poaching. In the Thai jungle, a new breeding population of tigers has been spotted by camera traps in the east. As of right now, this new breeding population is the second known wild population of Indo-Chinese tigers that are actually growing. There is one other growing group, and it consists of about 3,000 tigers in the western forests of Thailand near the dangerous border of Myanmar. This is fantastic news for everyone who doesn't want tigers to slip away and vanish. John Goodrich from the local tiger program and wildcat preservation group said the discovery is nothing short of a miracle. The camera trap footage revealed a group of female tigers and their cubs roaming through the jungle, seemingly at peace. These tigers are slightly smaller than the Bengal or Siberian tigers, which are also almost extinct. And sadly, there are only about 221 of these cats left. So seeing more being born is definitely a good thing. Number 1. Mysterious Palenque The city of Palenque was one of the greatest jungle discoveries ever made in Mexico. In fact, it's one of the most fascinating archaeological sites anywhere in the world of the Maya. Palenque is not actually the original name of the city. It was first identified as La Cama, which means the place of great waters. It was also known as Na Chan, the city of snakes, and the territory it was in was called Bacal, which was the Maya word for bone. Palenque was the name given to the site when it was discovered in the 16th century. What's really interesting about this jungle city is its earlier history. Before it was a huge capital hidden under the dark canopy of the forest, it was a happy and quiet village. 
Its life began around the year 150 BC. People lived in relative harmony, and there was a lot less bloodshed than in the later years. Problems came when the city reached its peak around the year 600. This was when the pyramids were constructed, the great temples to the fierce Maya gods, and when kings and queens began to change like the seasons. According to the National Institute of Anthropology and History, there were nine male rulers and two female rulers between 345 and 603. And by the year 900, Palenque, like the rest of the Maya world, was plunged into anarchy and chaos. Thanks for watching! Which mysterious jungle city is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!